All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are doing a method of superposition example with a statically determinate beam with two different loads on it. And our goal is to find the deflection at little a, which happens to be two meters away from big A, so like a quarter of the way across this eight meter span. Now, with a method of superposition, all we do is we basically just redraw the same structure, but we distribute all those loads onto uh, one load per structure. So we're gonna start with this, and we're gonna say that this is equal to the distributed load plus the beam with the point load only. So when we're looking for deflections or slopes at any given point on the actual beam, all we do is we find the deflection on this beam, and then we find the deflection on this beam at that same point. We add them together, and then we get the actual deflection. So um, that works for deflections anywhere along the span. It also works for slopes anywhere along the span. So for example, if we were looking for the actual slope here at B, we just take the slope at B here and the slope at B here, add them together, and then we get the actual slope. Pretty nice little method. Um, the one thing to watch out for when you're using this is if you have an expression for the maximum, uh, like maximum displacement, for example, um, be really careful with those because the maximum displacement uh, typically uh, from each loading type won't be in the same location and you can't add stuff together that's at different locations because that's not how the method of superposition works. Basically pick a point on the original structure, find that same point on the other structures, add them together and that's what you get. So don't be mixing measurements from uh, from different parts of these beams. All right, so the fastest way for us to do this and the way that we're going to be doing in this video is by using a table. And I've got a table on the website here. You can go to the URL there if you want, or you can, uh, you can find this in the, I'll put a link in the YouTube description or somewhere up over in this area. I'll throw a link there, a little bubble thing that pops out as well. So you can get this table if you want. Um, but basically what we need to do is we need to identify the two types of loads that we have. We have a distributed load on the uh, simply supported beam. Then we also have the point load that's uh, not centered uh, somewhere also on a distributed or sorry on a simply supported beam. So what we want to do is we want to grab this elastic curve equation and drop it in here for the distributed load and then come back here and we're going to grab the elastic curve equation for the point load here. But because the question asked for us to find the deflection at little a, then we're going to be grabbing this one right here, just like that. So for x equals a, we'll just bring the subscripts here, x equals two. And then uh, what we want to do here is I've already labeled this kind of as our zero system. Let's call this number one and then let's call this number two. And when we're looking for the actual deflection at uh, for y equals uh, so for the deflection which is y at x equals two, basically in that kind of original system zero, basically all we do is we just take the sum because of superposition. So it's at x so y at x equals two because of system one. So we can even put that little subscript there like that, uh, and then we're going to add that to the deflection that we get in system two, which is uh, y at x equals two in subscript little two there. So we add those up. So what we can do is we have all of the information here that we need. We have EI, we have W. Now we're gonna say that uh, X is going to be equal to two meters because that's the point that we're looking for. So we can go and fill in this side first and then everything in the brackets. Then let's just simplify that a little bit. And when we go to cancel up the units, we have meters four over meters two, so that's gonna bring us down to two. And then we have Newtons canceling out with Newtons and then one meter here that cancels out, giving us this final answer in units of meters. And if you crunch it in the calculator, you get negative 0.0038 meters, which is also equal to negative 3.8 millimeters. And this negative sign here means that we have 3.8 millimeters in the downward direction. And that comes from the sign convention here where we're saying that if we get a positive y value, that indicates that the deflection is in the upward direction. And if we get a negative, then that would be uh, indicating that the deflection is in the downward direction, which we should stop and think about, does that make sense? We're basically, we're pressing on from a beam on the top pressing down. So we would expect this beam, this really simple beam to, to deflect downwards. And when we see that we're getting that downward deflection, then that means that we're, we're probably on the right track. If we saw this going up, then we'd know we'd probably have an error somewhere in here, and we should go back and figure out where that is. All right, so let's go and we have fill out the expression here for the deflection at x equals two for the system where we have this uh, single point load. And when we go to cancel out some units, we have Newtons on the bottom, Newtons, we have a meter squared, we have a meter squared, and then a meter squared, and a meters. So we're getting left here on the top with a single units of meters. If you punch this in your calculator, you're going to get this is equal to negative 0 0.0012 meters, 
which is equal to negative uh, 1.2 millimeters. And again, with the same logic here, when we have a negative sign, based on our sign convention, that is equal to 1.2 millimeters in the downward direction. So when we go to calculate the actual deflection here, it's just the sum of these two deflections at this point, x is equal to 2. Uh, so we have these values here. We're just going to throw them into our expression. We have negative uh, 3.8 millimeters. That's the deflection caused by the distributed load at x equals 2 minus the deflection caused by the point load at x equals 2, which is 1.2 millimeters. And we're going to find that our y at x equals 2 in the actual system uh, is going to be equal to negative 5 millimeters or equal to, like we said, 5 millimeters in the downward direction. So let's put a nice little green box around that. And uh, that is the deflection here at x equals 2 for this structure that has uh, these two loads on it. Now, just want to point out that this is a really fast way to do it, um, specifically looking at uh, system 2 down here. Um, that took us just like a minute or whatever just to write that out and figure out that that's the displacement here. Um, I did a video on this using the double integration method, and that's this guy here. It's called Find Deflection and Slope of a Simply Supported Beam with a Point Load. Um, this was uh, this was almost a 10-minute video to watch, and uh, if you watched the previous video, I, I talked about this video a little bit. Um, basically, there was about an hour's worth of work that went into this video, and uh, I think somewhere down here... Uh, at the end of the video, yeah, in this area, we found the we actually found the um, the displacement and the slope at uh, a quarter of the way across, so basically right below that single point load. Um, but it was like just full of math and and, and time consuming stuff. So if you're given the opportunity to use uh, a table method like um, like I did in this video, then definitely go for it. It's way faster. Uh, and even imagine if we were doing uh, the double integration method with the distributed load here added on as well. It's just going to be that much more annoying and, and hard to do. So if you're able to do this uh, using tables, then definitely go for it. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps this video up. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to do another example of the method of superposition.